Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab, and if like me, you own a fat PS3, it has every function from both generations of PlayStation before it. PS4 and PS5 have lost more features than an Ubisoft pre-order. So here are five of the biggest features we've lost since the PS3. For most games, PlayStation pads are great to use, and I'd argue that the DualSense is the greatest controller for general gaming ever created. However, there is one genre of games that will turn your hands into disfigured claws if you try to play for any decent length of time, and that's fighting games. This D-pad with the little corners cut out is your ticket to early arthritis if you want to play Street Fighter. You could buy a Hori pad, but that's a lot of money for very little improvement. And £150 for a Hori arcade stick can just do one. None of this was an issue on the PS3. You could just plug in any USB controller in and it works fine. This is good, because the whole D-pad issue on fighting games is a problem Sega solved back in the 90s on the Sega Saturn with its frankly fantastic controllers. I've got an official Sega Saturn USB controller and here I am with it hooked up to my PS3. I can scroll through the XMB fine, I can navigate the game's options fine and I can play Fighting Climax Ignition perfectly. What was the point in taking this feature away? How did crushing finger cramp help anyone apart from Hori to sell everyone ludicrously overpriced aftermarket controllers? I've just answered my own question. So you got your PlayStation 5 hooked up to your nice big TV and a kick-ass sound system. You want to listen to some music? Well, tough luck. All you can do is stream Spotify with its quality which is far lower than the audio quality that a CD offers because PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 simply do not read audio CDs. However, if you've got a fat PS3, you can bathe in the oral splendour that is offered by the superior technology of yesteryear. But if you're truly an audiophile with a fat PS3, not only can you treat your ears to the sounds of CD audio, but you can also take advantage of the highest grade audio playback available in the form of Super Audio CDs, or SACD for short. The PS4 not being able to read CDs sucks, but you know what sucks even more? That actually the PS4 can read CDs, and it's only a limitation locked away by the system software. If you consult your PS4 safety manual, something no one in the history of the world has ever done, you turn to the page that details the hardware and it lists the disk drive as having the necessary hardware to read CDs. But lol, CDs can't be played. Same can't be said about the PS5 though. That really does lack the correct laser to read CDs. And this directly affects the next section of the video. The fat PS3 is truly the king of backwards compatibility. Chuck in a PS1 disc and it will work. Same with a PS2 disc. If you look at a fat PS3 motherboard, it has this, which is both the CPU and GPU from the PS2 all in one chip, and PS games are done through near perfect emulation. However, if you want to play any of the Docker demo series of games from the PS1, well, you can forget it. These games require you to have a pocket station plugged in, and the PS3 wants to act like a dickhead about it. You see, I have the official USB memory card adapter for the PS3. This device reads PS1 and PS2 memory cards and allows you to transfer your old save games to your PS3. If you plug a pocket station into it, the PS3 will recognize it. It will even give it a special icon on the XMB. But if you play a game that requires the pocket station, all of a sudden the PS3 will get Alzheimer's and forget the pocket station's even plugged in. But pocket stations aside, being able to play almost every other PS1 and PS2 game on a fat PS3 is fantastic. What previous generation discs run natively on a PS4? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! 
PS1 and PS2 games should work under emulation fine. There is no excuse. It's simply Sony not being bothered to lift a damn finger. At least with the PS5, Sony has the excuse that CD discs simply won't work in the drive, so PS1 is out the question. PS2 is tricky because some games came on CD which won't work, and some games come on DVD which would work. But having some PS2 games work and some not would be a really crappy way of doing backwards compatibility support. What sort of company would say they were committed to backwards compatibility, then leave the customer to work out which games actually worked because they didn't even have 50% of the back catalogue working even though previous machines had similar hardware and even run under similar DirectX APIs. But really, what should have happened is that the PS5 should have been given a drive that was able to read CDs and none of this would be an issue. PS3 backwards compatibility for PS5 is just off the table because of how alien the hardware was and to get a higher compatibility emulator working would mean taking one of the PlayStation Studios away from making games for a few years which is probably not a good business move. All this means is that the fat PS3 was amazing. Aside from playing music CDs, there was plenty of other media functions that the PS3 had that went away from later generations. For a start, you could set up your PC as a media streaming centre, and your PS3 could access all your music over your home network. But the console's media functions weren't just limited to blasting out the theme tune of the internet, you could stream videos from your PC in the same way. But one of the super unique functions came in the shape of an add-on called Play TV, which was an official USB digital TV receiver. Just plug this bad boy into the PS3 and now you've got all the functions that the ill-fated PSX had. You could watch live TV, you could record it straight to the PS3's hard drive, Hell, you could even export your recordings back to the XMB. Two years after release, Sony even put out a free live chat update so you could talk to the other people on the PlayStation Network who were watching Babe Station at the same time as you. The media thrills don't end here either because the PS3 had all these fancy memory card slots in the front, it allowed easy connection to digital cameras and camcorders. Just take the memory card out of the camera, put it into the PS3 and then use one of the three high quality applications to display your boring holiday snaps to guests when you want them to leave the house. If you want to play online on the PS4 or PS5, you're going to have to stump up £50 a year for a PlayStation Plus subscription membership. This was not the case with the PS3. Online play was totally free. It's a shame that was all finished, right? Well, here's the thing. It didn't. PS3 is still free to play online and many games still allow you to play. Want to play Deathmatch in GTA 4? Well you still can, there are people out there right now having an absolute blast online, absolutely free of charge. I had a go, it's still great fun to play. Maybe you're more into Modern Warfare too? Well there's still many people still playing the game. I logged in to play a match and got decimated by people who clearly never stopped playing the game for over 10 years now. Even Street Fighter 4 is still going. Not that many people still playing and sometimes the connection is a bit ropey but still it's a game that is well over a decade old yet the servers are still up for you to play on right now for free. Some game servers have been shut down though like Motorstorm but don't worry private fan servers are starting to appear online that will bring these games back to life. Connecting to the PS online network emulated private server is really easy and now you can play Motorstorm online again. But the game that is the most populated is Warhawk. This game is packed on the private server and even voice chat is supported here. But the PS3 has another online trick up its sleeve and it's this, Ad Hoc Party. This is an application for the PS3 that allows your PS3 to act as an online server for the PSP. You connect wirelessly from your PSP to your PS3, then choose one of the many, many online rooms and set up a party. 
So this means you can play PSP local link up games like Monster Hunter, but online. All of this means is that the PS3 is a monster of a console, and it's very frustrating that later PlayStation consoles are missing these features. How about? Thanks for watching, guys. A like, subscribe, and comment are very much appreciated. Plus, if you like what you saw, here are some links on the screen now to some of my other videos that I've made that you might like.